Well, hi there and welcome back to the Drawing Database. Professor Mark Leone here again. And today we're going to spend 15 minutes or so with the drawings in the art of ancient Egypt. So what we see is a healthy aptitude in Egyptian art for what we call the uh, aspect of recording nature rather than recording what the eye sees in its natural state with perspective and atmospheric perspective. What we see in Egyptian art is a, a understanding of concepts about life and about what we've observed rather than the completion of a natural set. For instance, in this drawing, this gridded drawing, which was set standard for Egyptian uh, art, was to grid off a, uh, in this case, stone or a papyrus or a wall, etc., for um, the preliminary drawings, which would be a framework of grids in this red um, applied paint that uh, all beginning line work before painting was done. So we had artists which were painters and draftsmen and scribes which used hieroglyphics and we they began by doing a very um, controlled stylistic rendering line work that we see here. Here we see the head uh, right in the traditional kind of Egyptian way with the profile of the head and then of course the front facing eye to give two different aspects of the same kind of view. Here we see the red grid laid out um, to control as, as, as certainly as Egyptian art evolved. Uh, Egyptian art was, was being made and drawings were being made as early as 19,000 BC which gets as close into cave art in terms of time so there was quite a bit going on there. Uh, as well. So this extraordinary example again shows uh, the view of the face and profile in the eye in a natural kind of front view which is standard codified Egyptian um, work. Here we go back in time now to the earliest of Egyptian art with this earthen uh, pot handmade, probably coil made. And what we see are drawings that have been made with a brush and some kind of chewed uh, stylus reed to make a brush. And we have a scene of animals here, some kind of deer figure and what looks like to be a boat or a throne with two, with two seats here. You know, very, very crudely contoured, but this image can be probably traced back somewhere between, I don't know, 23,000 roughly 12,000, 11,000 years BC, so it's quite, quite old and quite in the earliest part of Egyptian um, civilization, so really kind of Paleolithic um, in that particular area. And we, we see how it, it uh, favors quite well to uh, the cave drawings in cave art of the um, uh, caves in Altamira in Spain and Lasco in France as well. So they're, those are earlier, but these still have a resonance to that initial kind of quick and beautiful decorative and also contouring. Um, and we see images of gazelles and boats here and other other uh, images show antelope and hip, hippopotamus, hip, or hippopotami for plural as well. So quite a bit going on in terms of just direct contour drawing. Here I thought it would be nice to show you an image of a uh, kind of hieroglyphic um, styling of understanding that the symbolic pictograph images of hieroglyphics were codified and used and written in by scribes. We had scribes that, that worked on the formation of the uh, the pictographic words and then artists or um, the scribes, if you will, of contour or of line or of form worked on the images that we see. So here we have one example, just a kind of a, a textual example of the hieroglyphics that are very much drawn in contour line. 
and they had a phonetic relationship to words and phrases and then they also were signifiers or um, adjusters to a, a phonographic phrase um, that could be adjusted based on the picture that we see after the the spoken word as well which is pretty fascinating uh, too as well but again both hieroglyphic certainly and also the um, the you drawing and, and painting of forms in Egypt were both heavily influenced by design drawing. Here we see an evolved papyrus tablet re, or, or piece of paper generally made by palm fronds and then smoothed over time with a wood uh, uh, device or a hard smooth stone device to soften the paper and uh, smooth it out. I've had the pleasure of being in Egypt and seeing many of these as well as in Luxor uh, too to see quite a bit a few of the uh, the paintings there um, and it's fascinating to see the techniques and the style merging but here we see drawing becoming a major focus um, with two different sets of uh, artists here the scribes that are drawing the hieroglyphic uh, information and, and I don't know uh, I'm not an Egyptologist for by any means and so none of this is, is interpreted by me but what we can say and what this this video is about is analyzing drawing throughout art history and we see how heavily heavily drawing scribing contour lining influence not only the columns to be read uh, phonograph uh, uh, to well to be pronounced and then also to be modified by the type of drawing. And we can see animal forms, we can see human forms, we can see eyes, etc. into a language. And then we can also pop up to the illustrations uh, above and see the quintessential um, technique of Egypt with its flat contour drawing, right? Focusing on the profile of the figure with the feet extended, hands extended, and then the eye coming back to look towards us in the simple but yet elegant style of contour line drawing. These techniques were passed from scribes and artists down through the centuries as Egyptian art evolved to become more complex and more uh, meaningful um, in ways used for royal events, for um, autocratic or royal propaganda, if you will, for magic and for religious ceremonies to essentially keep the forces of evil at bay and to um, invite the goodness, um, if you will, of humanity uh, at any time. And of course, we see more of more detailing and hieroglyphing here on these columns. Well, we see this technique, this column writing for reading, for interpreting, and then the illustrative images that find their way through the, um, the, the forms and they, they compare favorably, we'll see later on, to medieval manuscript uh, painting as well. Same kind of thing that we see here. We see uh, an overextended illustration here um, with that traditional sort of lapis lazuli blue that we see. So, you know, in terms of technique, uh, earthen pigments were ground water was added to them and, and they could dry and be re-wet so they became kind of as we know watercolor cakes if you will but they had a, a permanence to them so they would adhere to paper and to walls and, and for the most part stand the test of time but we see the traditional Egyptian style here with the flatness the geometric shapes boats animals farmers tilling uh, birds etc royalty in some hieroglyphic symbols uh, through there and of course uh, illustrations and done by the artists and then we see the scribes work to the right on this column and we see all the wonderful beautiful hieroglyphic work that happens that um, really uh, has a nice pictographic uh, language that we see still in contemporary um, calligraphy certainly in more uh, East Asian uh, pictographic um, writing forms in uh, Japan, Korea, and certainly China. 
and then I could also argue Arabic in its uh, its own way is very pictographic uh, still, uh, for sure. So another example of Egyptian writing and also drawing, both heavily influenced by the spirit of drawing. Here we see a stone tablet with full-on painting and obviously some deg degradation by certainly by time, which is to be understood. Uh, sustainable, but we see the uh, really a full Egyptian uh, healthy use of color, vibrancy in the yellows, the um, luscious uh, soft blues, the terracotta reds, the white of the cloak, fashion in the style of hair, headdress, and again the prototypical Egyptian profile, and then the frontal eye view of the Egyptian uh, uh, coded uh, style that again these were to be passed down from mentor to student and to be mastered by the student so there weren't a lot of changes in Egyptian art it, it improved in its technique and its aesthetic over time but it remained stylistically very similar or relatively static for for between the old and new kingdoms for for three or four certainly um, millennia, thousands of years. Egyptian culture, as we, ancient Egyptian culture as we see it lasted for quite a long time. And then let's let's analyze really quickly the drawing technique. Underneath you would find a grid as we've seen before and um, then we would uh, understand that the artist would scribe the contour line so you can see it here still showing out in the lips and nose, the chin, underneath the chin, the neck coming down. Uh, certainly in maybe changing color in the uh, this apparatus that she's holding and then certainly to the contour, excuse me, the contour line work in the shoulder area, this beautiful stylized contour line work, the breast form, the wrist, the flatness, but the 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 understanding that the craft is is very um, well controlled and aesthetically rich for its time, and then again it, it compares favorably to Gothic art of its own flatness in the Middle Ages within within uh, Europe as well. And here we have an unusual scene. I thought this was worth showing. We have um, something that is different than many of the the stylistic Egyptian creations. Of course, now we have the drawing, we have the contour line drawing, so that's not it. The beautiful scribed outlining of forms, the filling in of the chair in profile, we have the Egyptian head. But what do we notice? What's different about the head? Well, the head now is, instead of, right, it's profile, right? So we have the nose, the mouth, the lips, the the chin, right, back of the head, and then, of course, we have the Egyptian eye that's looking right at us right that's very crude but you get the idea here we have the head reaching towards us and turning and looking straight towards us where we have not one but two eyes looking right at us and so we have a frontal view of the head with two frontal eyes looking directly towards us so less of a concept or aspect art rather than a direct observational confrontation. This this was on a funerary type um, structure and signified who was entombed. So this woman was, uh, it was a, a, a representation of her at the time to uh, record her identity within the, the mummification or tomb. In this particular image, what we see here, this is really uh, believed from Thebes which is which I've been to, um, and it is really kind of considered the kind of the museum, if you will, of Egyptian painting, and and for our understanding, drawing uh, as well as it re reached its kind of its highest moments in roughly oh the fourteen thirteen hundreds B.C. Now this is this is still a good one to about three twenty five hundred years before the Middle Ages even appeared. So. Um, we see here a funerary boat boat scene and we see that the color gets a little bit more naturalistic and not quite uh, as flat we still get the dark outlined uh, you know continuous 
uh, uh, red lines that we see right in the contouring and the painting, we get also size differences, the importance of um, more important workers, more important figures that were larger in scale like these figures, this particular figure is probably the most important and the smaller they are the less important and the higher they are the farther away they are uh, too as, uh, as well. So um, essentially this boat is ferrying a, um, a body to be taken to burial in, in, uh, in that sense. And so we also get a little bit more of a faster approach to the painting as well as a little bit less controlled and a little bit looser uh, in style too as well. So again, you know, the same attributes are there, the aspective type of drawing, the flatness in the Egyptian um, artistic style. There's no hieroglyph, well, there's a little bit of hieroglyphics there, so there's some scribing there. But again, to summate, we have the understanding how drawing has been uh, has influenced uh, across the globe cultures both uh, as ancient as cave paintings to uh, Egyptian work and we'll see other cultures relatively at this time how drawing played a role in the development of those cultures.